Nicharak Amira and the Tetter Amira, a new Camera. Nicharak Amira, the Tetter Amira, a new Camera. Nicharak Amira, Pata, the Tetter Amira, Pata, a new Amira, Pata. This is your boy Capra Pata coming at you with another video. And this time we're going to talk about spiritual science. But before we begin, I'd like to give thanks to my ancestors, elders, and guides. Those who are not only here, but those who are on the other side. It is without you, I could not have done it. So, I'm going to go ahead and start from where I left off. I talked about nutrition, but this time I'm going to talk about spiritual science. Because to me, that kind of connects with that. Duau, sister, my aunt, how's everything going? This is my aunt Tefnut. And boo to our winter. Do a oo, do a oo, do a oo. My sister Joy Allen. And I've got my brother, Elder Pata, a tapu, Uncle Chisanab. So, I want to talk about spiritual science. Now, there are forces that affect us from the outside. So, the Hermetic philosophers focused on seven destructive causes, in which, of course, they knew and learned about from dealing with Comet. Ah, okay, I see. Well, keep me posted so I can go ahead and tune in, sister. You know, it's always a good thing to be able to be a part of events that's gonna uplift the spirit. You know, there's some events coming up in fact, I would like to keep sisters and brothers informed on those because what I like to do is start teaching classes. That's where I'm going with all this. What I'm looking at now is how we can eventually have sisters and brothers who can call in. And I would like for people to tune in to Karmic Dynasty, where Sister Joy Allen has a beautiful platform. She actually has some of my uh, some of my lectures there as well. So please support the sister. She's got a lot of good stuff to offer. Hatepu. So we're talking about seven destructive causes that can be corrected by positive changes in lifestyle and the raising of one's vibration to a higher frequency. The seven destructive causes are as follows. Evil spirits. Two, derangement of the material nature and of the natural or the spiritual nature. Three, an unhealthy or abnormal mental attitude Four, the law of compensation, which they also know as karma. Five, the motions and aspects of the heavenly bodies. Six, a misuse of faculty, organs, or function, such as overstraining a member or overtaxing nerves. And seven, the presence in the system of foreign substances, impurities, or obstructions. Okay, that's why earlier, in an earlier video, I talked about spiritual nutrition or nutritional alchemy but anyway i got that list from looking into uh the secret teachings of the ages by manly p hall you can check that out if you ever can get a copy of it or you could probably find it on pdf or somewhere anyway these are the things that the priests and sages of africa continue pardon me for itself i don't know what happened but anyway we had a quick disconnection. So anyway, what I talked about earlier, these are the things that our sages in the priesthood of Africa look for in dealing with those who are sick or in a state of imbalance. These healers and master psychologists, and a psychologist is a knower of the soul, and a psychiatrist is a doctor of the soul. Unlike with Western healing methods, the person is examined holistically and often through forms of divination. And a person is given instructions 
and rituals, prayers, medicine, and fasting, and sometimes forms a devotional service to ancestors, community, and the creator. And this is the ritual used to put up your force field of protection and to bring balance back into your life. It is calling upon the guardians previously mentioned and um, in when I was talking about uh, nutritional alchemy and the forces of Peru, and aka the Mesuheru, who are in turn, they're guarded by the, uh, the mothers. Now, I want you guys to do something along with me. I want you all to just take a deep breath. I want you to chant. Um... Do it one more time. Um... Do this like three times and just let your body feel it resonate, okay? This particular sound vibration, unk and om and amun, is basically the same thing, okay? So when we talk about sound vibrations, we're talking about switching the frequency of the energy that's around you so you can have a different vibration and an effect on your environment as well as your personal life to make the changes necessary, changes in your personality and changes in your energy matrix. So today, um, those of the priesthood of various traditions in Africa, they have the patient or the person coming to get a consultation, take special herbal baths. And these baths are meant to change the person's vibratory frequency to remove obstructions and negative energies from the person's life or increase the individual's power of attraction. And these rituals are also prescribed in, in uh, surviving traditions, like West African traditions, like uh, Vodun, Santeria, Ocha, Regla de Ocha, Obea, and Palo. That's just to name a few. Um, Kambanda, and so forth, okay? So I wanna make sure I, I can get as many as possible. Look me, right? There's many, there's many. But anyway, there's still this basic underlying structure that can be found in West African traditions and their descendants that have been brought over here, where one is able to purify their auric field and raise their vibration, or take a bath for protection, or if they wanna attract a significant other, there's a bath for that and a sound for that. We're gonna go over that eventually, family. Anyway, in Kemet, the priest of Amun would actually take three baths a day to remove all impurities from their bodies and energy field, and water itself is held in high regard. And as we can see within the glyphs of the Nefer or the symbol of Nefer, our Nefer and the Ankh, we see that water and the water wave making up the photonic sounds. In a temple, the priest would burn frankincense and myrrh where they worshiped, meditated, and sang devotional hymns to the Neturu, AKA the deities. And they also utilized sound, color, and aromatherapy. And these methods were used to raise the vibration, purify the space clean one's aura and heal the sick. These external rituals are objectifications of an internal process of the Neturu and working with the Neturu. So the word and the power of sound, as can be seen in music, the use of sound vibrations was and still is a method in charging the atmosphere and raising the vibration. So when we analyze the metronetic glyph Nefer, we see that it looks like a string instrument, but it is actually the lungs and trachea symbolizing harmony. The lungs and trachea deals with the ability to breathe. In the Yoruba, um, the Yoruba teachings, they talk about the Odu Eji Yogbe as well. It's mixed, talking about music with the human voice. The voice box is divine. It's a divine instrument used to create music via the human voice, and it can be used to activate the glands through the endocrine system, including the pineal gland, which is the bio-spiritual receiver, according to the Shabaka stone, a.k.a. Menefer, Memphite theology. It was Ptah who called creation into existence, and Ptah means opener and shaper, and according to the theology of Anu, it was Ra who brought himself into existence from the blackest or the blackness of the darkest night. So the symbol for Ra is a circle with a dot in the center, the black dot, but the actual spelling of Ra in the Metoneter, that is the hieroglyphics, is a fish's mouth. 
and the extended arm. That's because in the beginning, the Creator spoke creation into existence within the heavenly waters while simultaneously shaping it into form. The repetitive utterance of Ra produces heat in the body and raises up the internal fire of life within the body temple. It was Ra who sent forth his mouth, his uh, Shu and Tefnut, which is Shu is heat and Tefnut bring moisture. Shu and Tefnut gave birth to Nut, that is the sky, and Geb, who is the earth. And the word in ancient Kemet was considered sacred. The Greeks called this word the Logos. The purpose was and still is of the resurrection of Osir, the Christ, the Kras, the Kerisheta, who initially comes as the living word, who was and has been betrayed and murdered, yet defeats death. We see it today in what we call the teachings of the, the uh, Shem, Shem's teachings, as opposed to Ham are the same teachings, but just told in a different way. Yeshua, the Christ, the Christ, returns with the sword, sick word, the S word, to defeat the enemies of, of righteousness and be victorious. To be victorious was to be makiru, true of voice. The commission priests believed that sound, but divine utterance is what brought forth creation and holds it together. It is important to speak words of truth power and joy because everything you say is recorded in the energy field around you and constant slander of self and others will cause obstructions in your personal well-being and achievements. Let us also keep in mind that Tahuti is the heart of Ptah and that it was Tahuti who is said to have invented the Merunetter. The Merunetter is all around us. It teaches us. It communicates with us. Merunetter is the signs and symbols of nature. Man, male and female, has observed these symbols, and by mimicking what she and he sees around him and her, she and he comes up with his and her own sounds and symbols and created languages. So as a side note, I'd like to remind you that the ancient commissions, um, their everyday writing for every individual was not the Merunetter. That was reserved for a certain class of priests and divine scribes who recorded in stone things that needed to take place in nature in cycles and everything hoping that this knowledge would survive and which it has you just have to be able to decipher it however the average person and when it came to writing letters they would write in hieratic so there's a difference between hieratic and the metunetter family okay so these are lessons that we're going to talk about as time goes on so the universe talks to us all the time and they always have through symbols. Everything around you is something being said. You just have to interpret it. Every object is a letter and every group of objects is a word. These are the result of the divine forming energies and matter into forms that will we recognize as reality. These are the result of the divine forming energy and matter into forms. Remember, it is energy slowed down that takes in what we call the properties of physical matter. In the story of Osar, we see that he was the father of Haru. And in the story of Jesus Christ, we see that Osar and Haru are combined within the person of Jesus, Isu, Eshu, Heru, and Christ, Christ, Kerisheta, Osir. This is the reason he is made to say, I and the father are one, because Seraphis and Happy are one. We'll talk about that some other time, family. In, in name, Haru contains the word of power, He and He, which is the sound vibration for elevation. You find the same word of power in words like heat, heaven, helios, as well as ashe. He means one million in the ancient comedic language, unlimited as well as eternity in a commission language. When you get a chance, repeat the sound, He, 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 He. Or hey, and see how you feel because it helps to raise the energy level of any collective group. It is also the sound of the fire breath used to raise the internal fire and remove toxins from the body. In the Hebrew teachings, you find the four sacred syllables for Jehovah, which is Yahe Vahe. So the priests of ancient African traditions utter sounds that heal and restore order within the mind and body. And these sounds of power can harmonize and elevate one's personal vibratory field. The human voice is a powerful tool, a powerful musical instrument. It is known that the energy of the human voice, just like any form of music, affects the mind and the body. And this is one reason why a pregnant woman should listen to music of an elevated quality 
as opposed to music full of explicit lyrics because this will affect her unborn child. With enough Shechem or Ashe, one can shape reality with mastery of the word itself. There's a book by uh, John Hines John. Um, I think the name of that book is Muntu. Uh, it's Muntu. It's either Muntu or Bantu. Anyway, he talks about the Dogon traditions, an explanation of the creative power of the word in his book. Uh, the name of that book is Muntu. It says, the Nomo says, by the way, he's quoting Ogatomeli. The Nomo say, water and heat is the word, or Nomo. The vital force that carries the word issues from the mouth in a water vapor, which is both water and word. Thus, Nomo is water and the glow of fire and seed and word in one Nomo. The life force is a fluid as such a unity of spiritual, physical fluidity, giving life to everything, penetrating everything, causing everything. Month two, page 124. So to have knowledge and to know the name of a force of nature in ancient Kemet meant that one could command the force of nature. The Ren, the name, was considered an important part of existence. To call the name of a person, place, or thing is also to give power to that person, place, or thing. The spelling of Ren is R-N, and the R is a fish's mouth, and the N is a wave of water. That's because creation itself has a name, and spirit and creator call upon this, upon the name within the primordial waters. All life on the planet Earth has its own origin in water. In fact, the unk is a symbol of life representing the harmony of male and female. The glyphs that make up the comedic word is the water wave mm, and the placenta k. So science indicates that the Earth formed 4.5 billion years ago, starting out as a poisonous, non-life-sustaining atmosphere consisting of ammonia, ethane, methane and hydrogen sulfide the life germ began to settle in the vast ocean to be what is known as the primordial soup soon amino acids gave rise to proteins and these proteins would give birth to life forms life forms that could replicate and sustain themselves human life began in the water and after two weeks of conception develops into a fish-like creature with gills this has nothing to do with random selection all of this is the result of cosmic intelligence. Everything that happens on earth has its reflection in the heavens. Okay? So, we're calling on the Ren of the ancestors, the Shepsun, the Egun, so forth. The priest would, or would announce the names, the Renu, of the departed while pouring libations to their Ka's. And the Ka is a person's double in the spiritual world. But once Ka is invoked, that person can still work in the realm of the living as an ancestral force. However, only the cause of the sorrowfy were invoked by the priest. Okay? And usually the cause have mummies. And these mummies or these sahu were still fed and treated as if a living person. That's because if one was a murderer, they would not be a sorrowfied. If one was had broken too many laws and there was no way of retribution. This person would be denied their immortality if they did not pass by those 42 judges and were able to have their heart weighed with the feather in equal balance. They had to uh, work out and have harmony with my aunt. Okay? So this is dealing with energy. It's dealing with karma and it's dealing with balance. The cause of those of good character were called upon and remembered, pushing further up the line of spiritual evolution. Also, the spirits of those who died violently or under traumatic circumstances had to be called and elevated by fire, and the unfortunate ones whose names were forgotten were considered victims of a second death. As um, for the purification by fire, it was not considered an everlasting torture, but more of a transmutation, which led to purification and finally liberation. Powerful forces were invoked with the utterances of Hesiu, songs of power, and Hekau, words of power, and calling upon the names of the ancestors, the Seshu and the deities, the Netaru. So with that, family, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. You know, we all got some things that we got to do. Hopefully, 
you know, I'll be able to come with some more for you. Um, if you're interested in more, let me know. If there's a subject that you'd like to see me cover, feel free to leave a comment. Peace and blessings, sisters and brothers. Uncle Justin Arab.